Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Guys, today we're going to be reacting to the good Muslims wear hijab. Guys, this is actually one of your competitions for my comment section. I just saw it and I kind of got interested in it. Guys, let's get straight into this. People have been mindset. queer since the beginning of time. Exactly, they have, and no one's denying it. And people have acted upon that. There's poetry, and there's erotic, homosexual that's a poetry. That's a sin in, if you look at every other religion, that's a sin in every religion. No, it's not. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. A good Muslim woman wears a hijab. Hey. First thing I want to make clear is that a Muslim woman who doesn't wear the hijab, that doesn't mean that she's not a good Muslim. The reason that I step forward is because that means that this woman has taken on the challenge of going out every single day wearing a headscarf and wearing the proper clothing. When they go outside wearing the hijab, everyone that looks at them knows they're a Muslim. It's an extremely, extremely, extremely difficult task that neither me or you will ever um, understand. But I have an extreme amount of respect for any woman who wears the hijab properly. Yeah, of course, I agree with you 100%, you know. I look to the Quran, which is our book, and the Sunnah of the Prophet, which is like the way the Prophet lived, peace be upon him. and. What does it say about the, the, the hijab, you know? Hijab is something that's ordained for women in the Qur'an, you know? Can the disagree a step forward? So I think that one of the main reasons why I disagreed is because of the statement, a good Muslim woman. I think that you can be a bad Muslim woman as well and wear the hijab. And then also the hijab is not just limited to the headscarf. It's how you dress and how you carry yourself as well. I was gonna say, so I actually have a question for both of you then. Let's say you meet a Muslim woman, you know, you marry her, she's wearing her hijab, but one day she says like, hey, you know, um, I, I don't feel like maybe I won't wear her hijab anymore. I guess like, what are your thoughts to be on that and on her decision for doing that? It's about finding out why they were wearing the hijab in the first place. Like, was it forced upon them by their parents? Or was this something that they came to the conclusion them themselves that, oh, you know what, I believe in Islam and I believe it's said in the Quran about wearing the hijab. Where do you see in the Quran that it requires hijab? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُولِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْلُدْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِيَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهْرَ مِنْهَا وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُورِهِنَّ عَلَى جُيُوبِهِنَّ So the, here the word khimar, it doesn't use the exact word hijab, but the word khimar means headscarf. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I guess for me in how I read the Quran and yeah. the translation that I have, the word isn't required, it should that women should cover their heads and cover their chests. And so that's, that's why I hesitate with saying that it's, it's an obligation, um, because it's more of a, I would say, should isn't must. So personally, I guess I just took the prompt to literally, I mean, I consider myself a good Muslim, alhamdulillah, but um, I don't wear the hijab, obviously. Even if the Quran doesn't specifically say that this is required, the interpretation of the Quran has said that it is required and I do believe that. I know it seems kind of contradicting that I'm a conservative Muslim and I don't wear the hijab. I just, I don't think I'm ready to kind of wear the hijab yet. I want to wear the hijab, I need to wear the hijab. Acting on homosexuality is a sin. Um, I believe that acting on homosexuality is a sin, if, especially like if you were expressing sexual desire, because that should take place between a man and a woman under the sanction of marriage. So that is the reason why I do feel as though it is a sin. And it's uh, pretty clear in the Quran, Allah SWT says, Do you guys prefer men over women when he's talking to the people of Lut? And the Prophet, peace be upon him, وسلم, he says that one of the, the biggest problems for the Ummah is the sin of Lut, or the people of Lut. Again, we could just all agree, you know, this is not our personal opinion or anything. It doesn't, in the end of the day, when it comes to religion, our personal opinion doesn't matter, right? It does not. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this is what God ordained for us, you know, this is the, the natural way of humans. Once we start diving in and wanting whatever we want, it just, where, where does it end at that point? Yeah. When is it gonna, is it gonna come to incest next? For instance, in America or in the West, homosexuality 30 years ago wasn't accepted, or 40, 50 years ago, but now it's acceptable. This is the liberal idea, right? The, the subjective morality, it just shifts. Exactly. It shifts based on the time. We don't shift in, in our religion. 
My question for liberal Muslims would be, who dictates objective morality? Islam, as God tells us in the Quran, is, is, a, is a religion in the middle. So it has some aspects that you have to believe in from God and some things that are a little bit more leeway for you. But you have to understand which ones are, which ones are which. Uh, may I start? Um, yeah, I don't believe that acting on um, homosexuality um, is a sin at all. Um, there's so much to get into. In the story of Prophet Lut itself, you see that, that they weren't condemned because they, the people of Prophet Lut were coming to, to his house to um, have sex with the men who were disguised as angels, but for you can look at it as a condemnation of, of rape and, and, and abuse itself and mistreatment of um, strangers. And the Quran verse that you um, cited as well, within that verse, um, Allah uses the prefix al, which is means the, and there's um, interpretations that exist that say that specifically is talking about those men specifically who leave those women specifically. So meaning that those men who did that had wives that they left to go rape these, or try to attempt to rape these um, guests in an attempt um, to um, bring humiliation upon the prophet and to, um, uh, to uh, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Basically, there's different interpretations of the story of Prophet Lut. One interpretation is that it's about homosexuality, and there are other interpretations throughout history that says it wasn't about homosexuality, but for some reason, the interpretation that it is condemning homosexuality is the dominant narrative, and I think that narrative seriously needs to be contended with, um, because we're saying that you know being homosexual, being homosexual or being bisexual or being anything other than heterosexual is a sin, but Allah creates you like that. Allah creates people who are intersex, like intersex people exist in this world. And so I think there's a lot of different interpretations out there about the story of Prophet Lut. And I think the central, um, the central point in it is um, contending with the fact that people use sex as a weapon, um, a weapon for domination, a um, weapon for humiliation. That's a real issue. And being homosexual, being something that you were naturally created, isn't. My experience being a queer Muslim woman in America has mm. been beautiful. Alhamdulillah, I've met and have been a part of a beautiful uh, Muslim community that is a mix of queer Muslims and not. Uh, I don't think I've ever experienced backlash, at least to my face, <laughs> for, for being queer and Muslim. Mostly um, questions or curiosity, but it hasn't ever been anything that felt like hurtful or unsafe. So there's a couple of different points that you said that I want to uh, rebuttal and respond to. Um, so the first one being that you said being homosexual, being bisexual, all of those things is a sin. First of all, that's incorrect. Being any of those things in itself is not a sin. So that's why when the Prophet is acting on homosexuality, that is the sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. He does not burden a soul with anything more than it can, it can take. As a Muslim, you believe that, like you just said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us all and He created homosexual people, with those people with those tendencies for a reason. But at the same time, this whole life is a test, right? Yep. And for the person who has those tendencies, then that's an extremely difficult test that they're going to have to go on with for the rest of their lives. And but that's an assumption that that is the only test. What if the test is living in a world that hates you, that thinks that you cannot act on a desire of love, of consensual love, but still being um, committed to Allah. What if that's the test itself? That, that is, that's part and of that's the, what I think is yeah, the test. And that's, I would say and that's, that's, that's the interpretation out there that we're not talking about. I, I have a question. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I would just also like to add, the Quran also kind of <clears> is <throat> about the nature, right? The nature of life and like, and so homosexuality not homosexuality, acting upon homosexuality goes against the nature of what, why we were born. Um, yeah, and so we but were, we were born, we were, sorry, we were kind of like made in order to procreate, right? Procreate. We need to like, you know, but we need to, that's, can't procreate, the though. that's the way of life. But, but I, I would disagree that the, that the purpose of being with someone is to procreate because in the Quran, Allah says that Allah creates mates for us so that we can find love, tranquility, and peace. And I think a lot of the reason why um, a lot of people think that um, acting upon homosexuality is a sin is because of hadith. And in, the, in those small numbers of hadith that are like unambiguously correct, there is no mention of homosexuality in those hadith. 
So, Read Homosexuality in Islam by okay. Dr. Siraj al Hakugal. Um, he talks about this extensively. Keisha Ali also talks about this. These are both two contemporary scholars talking about this. These are minority scholars in the way that. Why is and this that's only, fine. Yeah, no, why is this an issue only now, but not in all of this time of Islam? It has which always been an issue. No, this is it's not. Issue. It sure hasn't. The, the climate we live in nowadays, the People liberal mindset. People have been queer since the beginning of time. Exactly, they have. That's what I'm saying. No one's denying that. And people have acted upon that. There's poetry. And There's erotic homosexual that's a sin, poetry. That's a sin. If you look at every other religion, that's a sin in every religion. No, it's not. It it's, actually, not in, in it it's not up to me for it to interpret. That's why you look up to the people with knowledge. You look up to the people who have dedicated their lives to interpreting this in and the past 1,400 years. I have. That's not, what I'm saying. I can't. You can't ignore all the scholars, the scholars of the 1,400 years. I'm not ignoring them, but it's you can't just say they're the only ones who are correct. I just told you two contemporary scholars who have all. Two compared to thousands. Sure. And there's way more who are also thinking about this. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I really appreciate it. I know you're all very passionate about this topic, <laughs> but I think there's no, not going to be a middle ground, which is okay. Yeah, yeah, I think the point is just to still have a conversation, and I appreciate that you guys are still listening to each other and talking, but we have to move on to the next prompt. Yeah. The other side stains the image of Islam. Guys, what do you take Islam. from this? Like... I think that the reason why I stepped forward is because I feel like a lot of conservative Muslims, as a Muslim revert, um, have very strong cultural beliefs. Um, that can be very intimidating for somebody who is new to the religion. Um, and it kind of discounts like who I am <laughs> in my own deen. Um, so that's why I think that I feel that way, just because of the interactions that I've had with like born Muslims. Yeah, I, I love that point because uh, for me personally, People who revert, we say revert, obviously, because we believe that every Muslim is, every person is born Muslim, but then they get changed their creed by their parents, right? People nowadays, they have some weird thing, like, oh, if I was born Muslim, I'm, like, they think they're better and they treat them rudely. And this is not the way of a Muslim, right? The Muslim, we accept everyone as they come to the religion, you know? I was originally born into Christianity, and then I went on to college to study religious studies. And at that time is whenever I found peace with Islam, and so I decided to revert. I think the reason why I consider myself to be a liberal Muslim versus conservative is because I am a revert, and I know that I have so much more to learn, um, and I'm open to that. I also believe that within Islam, you have free will and free choice to make um, the correct decision. And so I find a lot of compassion for people in that way because I did live life for many years before Islam. People are so, so worried about cancel culture. People are so worried about what everyone else thinks. People are so worried about being accepted by society. But who cares? As a Muslim, it's our responsibility to care about, only care about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks and not care about what anyone else thinks. Okay, so I guess why I disagreed with the prompt is because I feel Islam is just, Islam is way stronger to be kind of tainted by a group within it, you know? Um, I don't, I may not agree with everything that uh, liberal Muslims think or, or view, but that doesn't mean I feel like they are like this big negative thing on Islam because I just don't feel like Islam can be affected by it. Yeah, I, I agree that in the fact that Islam itself can't be. What I, what I, the reason I agreed is because the perception of Islam, mm -hmm. I feel like that's what's being affected. Um, I, I disagree with that. I don't think that's true. I don't think having those different ide ideologies really taint either side because it's not like someone's going to see an idea, like for example, like you might not agree with this, but I support gay rights, right? And I'm Muslim. And no one's look at me and be like, oh, now all oh, Muslims support gay rights. I'm like, no, it's not true. It's just my personal preference. And that's why I kind of disagree with both of you guys. When you guys say personal opinion doesn't matter in religion, uh, I feel like it does at the end of the day because religion is about who you are too. Personal opinion is okay until it goes against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said or what the Prophet, peace be upon him, has said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No one's saying your opinion doesn't matter. Everybody's opinion matters. But in relation to Islam, your opinion isn't going to change the ruling. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that, yeah. yeah. But the ruling itself comes from people's opinions. Interpretation. You realize that, right? Like jurists, like that is what you do with the law. You interpret the law and you make a ruling from it's it based on that. It's important to kind of like, it's important to note that, you know, people who kind of interpreted um, the Quran, like you're saying, they're not just like normal people like me and you. But they They've are. kind of <laughs> like, no, they are, but like those are like scholars who kind of, like you said, dedicated, their life to kind of studying the Quran. Of course, and I think those people are also biased, like everyone, right? Like everyone has their- I don't think know, in the case of Quran that can be possible. 
it is possible because we're humans. All humans are biased and subjective because the fact that we're human, we have a different experience. I'm gonna interpret something or look at something completely different than another human being is because that's the nature of our existence. It's subjective. Just, just to make it clear, just to make it clear, this religion is done. It, it has been perfected as Allah tells us in the Quran. It's not like these scholars are just coming in and changing something new. This is something that we get it from a source. We always have to go to the higher truth. The higher truth is the Prophet and, and, the, and what the companions learned from the Prophet, right? Because if we're just going to go, then yes, exactly your point, you know, because humans are subject to that bias, you know, right? But we get it from the best source, which is our Prophet, right? If we don't follow the Prophet, who are we going to follow? It's acceptable for a Muslim man to have more than one wife. I guess for me, I think monogamy is not for everyone. <laughs> and so I think Muslim men, Muslim women can have uh, more than one partner um, if it's consensual. Allah, God tells us in the Quran that you can marry up to, up to four, but the, the precaution is that you give, maintain equity between them. And if you can't, then you have to stick to one. You mentioned that uh, men and women, you know, this is the difference, right? Because only men in this way. A man can marry up to four because think of this situation. Say for instance, he had more than one wife, say for instance, four wives, right? And he gets one of them pregnant, right? Everyone's gonna know who the, who the husband is and who the father is. If a woman has more than one husband, someone gets her pregnant, everyone's gonna know who the father is. That's not the exact reason, but I'm saying just, just an example, just to think about it, you know? And in, in the end of the day, this is because Allah told us the way. We live in a vastly different time. Um, we view women differently in this world. Just because that is what the Quran said in that context doesn't mean that we can't interpret differently now. But, but she, she's actually... I mean, maybe I'm the old-fashioned one because I always believe uh, love is... I mean, I believe marriage is always like a love marriage. I don't think you can love four people at the same time. That's just my yeah. personal opinion. If you do get married, get married to, for the, to the person that you want to be for the rest of your life and the person you, know, you share love with, not someone you just get married because you have you know, the authority to marry up to four people. So. You could have a love marriage, but you can also have an institution of marriage. And I also think that that's what Islam um, kind of bases marriage around as well, right? Because even the model modeled after the Prophet, peace be unto him, when it came to him having four wives, it was based off of like actually like merging tribes together, um, uh, political reasons, and also someone was a widow. So with that being said, I think that it's just different. And I think that that's one of the topics that we kind of have to seek the wisdom behind. Um, before we just make it about like today's times. Yeah, can men marry four wives, like four women? Yes, but you can't. I mean, you can't be unjust. Yeah, you can't be just I, with all the, the four the, of them. The four wives have to agree to it too. It exactly. Be, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If exactly, you want to marry someone exactly. else, a lot of so, a lot of women themselves don't even want. Like they don't yeah, want. Yeah. They're yeah. not okay with that. So like, yeah, you can do it, but you will never be able to do it the right way. So don't do it. Mm -hmm. You know. Christianity deserves the same scrutiny as Islam. <laughs> she, she's the she, yeah. I think she's the Islam she... is very scrutinized in Western media, specifically uh, for their practices. Um, because if you are uh, following the word by text, you know a lot of it doesn't align with what Western values hold. Islam has always been a target for people on the, the Western side, people around the world. Um, and I think Christianity has always been seen as kind of just like this top of the level religion. It's like, you know, you're a Christian, you're a good person, you can't do no wrong. Yeah, I think all religions need scrutiny. Um, I think any religion can be taken to extremes. Um, you cannot understand certain things and so do things that are harmful to, to others. Um, in terms of Christian history, you had the Crusades and Islamic history, you also had um, colonialism as well. Um, so yeah, every, every religion needs to be scrutinized. We can't just follow blindly. Yeah, I think the question was hard for me to answer because I don't believe that any re religion really needs scrutiny. Um, I think that for me as a born Christian, I can understand why Christianity and Islam are like kind of like looked at kind of differently just based on like rituals and like um, the way that it's expressed out into the world. Um, but I guess the question kind of just like caught me up with the scrutiny part. Like what exactly are we scrutinizing and why? Uh, I agree. There's no, there's no, uh, there shouldn't be any scrutiny on any religion. And it's because, why do I say this? Because Allah tells us in the Quran. When he gave the, the revelation to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, talking to the, because who were the people in Mecca? They were the, they were pagans, right? He told them, don't, don't, 
uh, attack their gods, don't say anything bad to their gods. And also when and Allah tells us, God tells us, uh, when we're talking to Ahlul Kitab, meaning the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews, we t speak in a nice way. Yeah, I, I just don't like how Islam gets treated worldwide in the modern sense. I, I think we're always like perceived as the bad guy. The bad guy. It's always us, you know, it's always, you know, <laughs> Uh, attack this Islam day, or you know you live in an Islamic country to buy and stuff like that. So I, I definitely think it's unfair how we're always like the scapegoat. Guys, I, I really need to talk about this. Like what he's saying is totally true, and some people are trying like that. But I feel people who are like this, like people who feel people who practice Islam are bad guys, harmful. Like I'll say they are illiterate or they they haven't just they are just dumb. Because if you have made research, like if you have made research, most religions only spring peace. Like that is actually one of the main point of religion for peace to reign, like for you to promote peace, love, and order. So I feel if you like, you can look like at a Muslim person and say this is a bad guy. If you just you just don't know anything, or you, I won't say you don't know anything, but I feel you have not just made research or. I would, I would just say you're dumb. That, that was the truth. Let's get back. For religions. I grew up in a more dominant white suburb in Illinois. Uh, I suffered heavy racism like every day in middle school and elementary school. You know, the, the original remarks, you know, terrorist, go back to your country, all that stuff. Growing up as a kid, I was religious. Uh, but then as I got to high school and college and started forming my own thoughts, I kind of went away from Islam. I kind of explored other things. But then the last like three, uh, three to four years, I started reading more about Islam. I started practicing more because I finally had my own like, freedom to actually practice it and not have my dad or my parents like, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that. So I definitely felt more like comfortable practicing on my own. The Quran must be reinterpreted for the 21st century. <laughs> she is the black sheep, guys. Like, to be honest, she is the black sheep. Both of them um, are. Well, I feel like this is kind of like the crux of what I've been saying this whole time. Um, you always need to reinterpret the Qur'an. Um, whoever is looking at the Qur'an, whoever is reading it, needs to interpret it, needs to understand what Allah is telling that person. All the information, everything that we're learning is about getting us closer to a just future. And in the time of the Prophet, slavery was well and alive. <laughs> the Qur'an never outright abolished slavery, but people, through their interpretation, decided that the Qur'an is leading us to a future where slavery shouldn't be allowed because it's unjust. Yeah, I agree. I think the Quran as a text is a holy text that should never be changed or obviously be written. Like that's, that's you know, off the table. Uh, but I think interpretation, kind of like we talked about the whole time, matters. I've consulted with different like mosque leaders, different people who actually study Islam, and not once that there was like a big overlap because they have their own interpretation of what the Quran is into the modern world. Um, so I just, I just think in general, there definitely should be a more modern interpretation. Uh, the first thing is, so we as Muslims believe that Obviously the Qur'an is the word of God and no one is disagreeing with the fact that society has changed. Do you believe that Allah knows the seen and the unseen? Yes. Yes. Okay, so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what was going to happen in the future. He knew what was going to happen to society. And when revealing the Qur'an, the Qur'an is timeless. Any reinterpretation of the Qur'an I believe is uh, incorrect because then what would differ the Qur'an from the Bible? So, so should slavery still be a thing? No, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, the slavery is a whole other topic. You know, slavery in the time of the Prophet was not the same as the trends, uh, whatever. The, the just one the act of Africa. owning another Africa. human being. That's a whole other thing. They, they were basically just a servant. They could buy their own freedom. They could. They had rights. They weren't treated like an animal, like how as we see in, in our history in America, how it was. You know, this is not what it was. Going back to the actual prompt. Uh, the, the Qur'an is, is, is a rahmah in the, in the people. It's a, it's a mercy for the humans Allah gave us to, right? The Qur'an is the words of Allah, right, of God. In the simplest form, I just believe that the Qur'an is like a sacred text, and sacred text as a whole just should not be touched. When I think about reinterpretations, I almost think about like amendments in a way. If we believe that the Prophet, peace be unto him, is the last and final messenger, then whatever he was, was revealed to him, it, it is that. You can't reinterpret everything. Because the second you open up one thing for reinterpretation, you're opening up the whole religion for reinterpretation. It's not opening up the whole religion. The religion itself the is, is the devotion religion. to Allah alone. That is what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. That Islam yeah. equals devotion to a religion. To, Islam equals devotion to Allah alone. Okay. Yeah. No. Guys, this 
It is beautiful, guys. Like, this is a 20 minute video, and I can tell you, I didn't feel like I've been here for 20 minutes. Damn, bro. Time is gone, but this is amazing. Like, me seeing young youths like myself, like, talking about religion is beautiful. But I actually get her point, though. But please, I need a lot of you in the comment section, guys. Please, I, they, they, they brought out a lot of discussion, and I want us to finish it in my comment section. Guys, tell me what you think about this last question. If the Quran is to be interpreted in the 21st century. But I feel I get her point in the sense that like she feels it's supposed to be interpreted that like, based on maybe the English and based on what like I I mean what she means by interpretation is like converting the Islamic text to English again. Like we said English, but like he said, what we change it from the Bible, so because some things is going to be lost and that's the truth. Things are always lost in interpretation. So guys, if you like, just got my channel. Please answer my question. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.